Yeah, Jonas. I uh, hope you had a good lunch. <laughs> uh, we'll start this uh, uh, talk about navigation component. Um, before starting, uh, I want just to feel and understand a little bit uh, who is in the room and who, uh, which kind of information do you have about nav component. Uh, who knows what component, nav component, navigation component uh, library and tools are and what it's aimed for? Okay, cool. Uh, who already read the documentation of nav component? Cool. And who is using nav component uh, every day? Nice. Okay. It's cool. That's a good mix. And uh, actually, this talk is, uh, uh, target, is targeting the people that are just read more or less the documentation. And also people that use it every day. Maybe you will find a few information things that you can uh, uh, grab and, uh, and um, help you to understand the tool. Um, yeah. Uh, but myself, I'm AL. Um, I joined Tiger uh, Connected recently to work uh, on the connected devices, connected watches of the, of the brand. Uh, but I also work uh, previously on another company that I will tell about. And actually, because this talk is a feedback of our use, uh, the, the project I, I've been part of, uh, how we used Nav Component, what was our problems that we had to solve and how we tried to make it easy to solve and to maintain. Uh, you can have the slide right now on this uh, URL, URL uh, b.ly uh, slash nav dash component. Um, that's available. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the API. This will be the introduction. I will not tell you the whole API of nav component because it will, be, it will require more than one talk. I will focus on a few very basic things and we will see that with these knowledges, we'll try to di dive in a little bit more on uh, uh, how you can solve problems. Uh, first, um, navigation component is based on, a, uh, three, on the API. You have three main entities that you will deal with. Uh, the first is the nav graph. You have the nav host and the nav controller. Uh, the nav graph is a graph declared in XML most of the time. Um, and you will have in this graph all the destinations that your user will be able to reach during the user flow. The nav control, it will manage the app uh, navigation. Uh, it will use the nav host for that. Uh, um, and uh, your uh, API, uh, sorry, <laughs> that's also the, your API to navigate. So basically, when you will have to navigate, you will use the nav control. And the nav host, it's uh, the nav host provider. It will instantiate the nav control and uh, um, most of the time, also, you will use the default implementation, but on some time, sometimes you will uh, need to um, create your own navos. So let's take a basic example now. Uh, so this is a recipe on how to use nav component on the very simple case. So you will add the uh, uh, lib dependency on your project. You will create a nav graph. Then you will add uh, the anchor of the fragment in your UI. You will get the nav control, and then you will navigate. It's pretty simple. Um, for the dependencies, uh, you will have two um, um, dependencies to uh, add. One is if you want to use the fragment, and the other one is the common one. And if you are using uh, um, Kotlin, I advise you to use the dash KTX uh, um, uh, dependency because you will have um, more uh, APIs related to Kotlin with extensions, and uh, the API will be better. The DSL, sorry. Uh, about the versions, uh, to make it short, there are two versions right now in release. One is the 1.0 and the other one is 2.0. And they are doing exactly the same thing. Uh, if you are using the support library, use the 1.0. But for the future, if you are using uh, Android X, use the 2.0. And a nav graph, when you are using a tool, uh, the, the nav component tool in your uh, nav editor, sorry, on Android Studio, you will graph, uh, your graph will look like this, OK? Uh, I'm, I don't have the time to show you this tool. Uh, there are plenty of videos showing because it's a very, very interesting and very uh, powerful tool. Uh, I won't show you. Just We will just work on graphs like that. Uh, but when you have a graph, uh, you will define different destinations. And as I told you, a destination is just a screen you want to display. Uh, on your nav graph, you will also choose one uh, start destination, which is some kind of the home of your flow. And to link different uh, uh, destinations, you have the possibility to use actions. So actions will just tell 
I'm on this screen, I want to go to this screen. And you can also add during these transitions um, all, um, different information. And we will see that a little bit uh, later. Uh, when we are looking at the uh, XML, <coughs> sorry, uh, it will look like this. So you have the navigation on top. You, oh, sorry, I don't see my mouse. Okay, that's fine. So you will have the um, navigation uh, um, tag on top. Then you will, uh, we will have two other uh, nested tags called fragments here because we are navigating through fragments. And we have an action uh, nested into the fragment. And this action, oh, sorry, this action will lead to the second fragment. So fragment one on top, fragment two. Uh, at the bottom, and the action from one fragment one, uh, fragment one to fragment two. In, uh, on your layout now, uh, you will have, for example, a container, and you will just declare a fragment. And again, I'm sorry. Uh, and the name of the fragment here, you see, it's the nav host fragment. That's the default implementation I was telling you about before. So now we know that nav host fragment is simply a fragment, and actually. Uh, 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 headless fragment. There is no UI, no, no real UI on the Navas fragment. Um, you also define on this uh, um, tag the nav graph argument that will lead to the nav graph I showed you before, you know, the XML file that we had just before. So this will tell, okay, this is your UI. And here you have a fragment, and the content of this fragment and this fragment will be led by the framework, uh, the, the, the nav graph that we had before. Now, on your code, very simply, on your UI, you will fetch the nav controller and you will use navigate method to uh, navigate simply. And on this example here, you can pass actions to navigate from one uh, target to another one or just pass the ID of the fragment if you want to navigate directly to a destination without using actions. Let's focus a little bit more on the nav graph. Uh, the navgraph will uh, declare all the reachable destinations. I told you that already. Um, and it, uh, one constraint that it must have only one start destination. Uh, it can contain actions and nested graphs. Uh, destination, basically, it's a node in your graph, and that's a screen to display. And on our example, and how it's handled by default uh, on the library, is the fragment. An action. An action is netted, nested into a destination, or you can have uh, actions at the top level of your navigation, and then, and then they, they are called global actions. Uh, it will contain a target destination, of course, and you can also define transitions, animations that will uh, occur when you are uh, um, changing your UI from one screen to another one. You, in the action, you can also uh, define the back behavior. The back behavior is basically how your user flow is, will behave when your user is, tap, is pressing the back button. So maybe you want to go back just to the fragment before on your stack, or maybe you want to go on to another one that have been created, and, and then you will uh, um, uh, dismiss all the, uh, um, the fragment that you have, the screen, the destination that we have, you have on your back stack. Also, something that is uh, pretty interesting uh, with the action is that actually they can share the same ID. And that's some, not something uh, we are familiar with because when we are creating XML layout, um, we cannot use the same ID on two items, even if they are nested with different containers, right? But for actions, they can share the same ID, and you will see that we can use it uh, to, do some, to simplify a lot uh, the navigation logic but we will see it later. Okay, uh, this is a very short chapter about additional features. That's basically the features I won't tell about so much. <laughs> I just want to tell you that they exist because I, not tell, um, I don't have the time to explain all the things. So you will have safe arguments. So when you want to um, navigate from one screen to another, this, the target destination could sometimes need um, arguments, information to initialize. Uh, you can do that statically uh, with a very uh, uh, powerful uh, API, and it's called safe arg. Uh, you can also uh, very easily use the navigation UI components of uh, the standard components of uh, uh, um, the uh, Android X and, and Material, and they are directly uh, um, 
linked to the nav control. There is an API to interact with them. So it handles the toolbar, the nav drawer, and the bottom nav. We'll focus on the uh, bottom nav just uh, later on this uh, talk because you'll see that there is something uh, interesting to, to, to deal with. And also, you can handle deep links. So that was very short, but that's the thing I won't really tell about during the talk. OK. Uh, yeah, I wanted to tell you about specific use cases, but I realized that it was really real use cases, and that they are finally pretty common on many applications. First, one thing that is also short. Uh, if you want to update your UI, you know, if you have an activity like that, and you have a frame around your fragment, and you want to update the fragment depending on the screen displayed, that's very easy. There is an API for that. Uh, it's a listener that you are um, you can add directly on the, the nav controller. Then you receive events. Uh, you, the callback is called when uh, uh, the screen, uh, the destination is changed. Then you just change your UI. Okay, this is a very simple and, uh, and basic things. But to go a little bit deeper now, I want to tell you about the context of the project I work with mainly for all the things that I, I will tell during this talk. Um, so, I used to work at Canto, which is a French and European now bank. Um, and of course, you were working on the Android application. Um, and the paradigm that we choose is to, ha is to have different activities, but one activity per feature. Uh, the project started in June uh, um, 2K17. Uh, uh, and something that is really, really specific when you have a banking application is that you have very long formulas that your user must uh, fill. Uh, for example, when you want to join an organization or create an organization, four months after the app has been released, so it was pretty early on the MVP, uh, there were 66 screens that we had to deal with just for the uh, uh, register uh, uh, flow. And the flow can be very complex with circular dependencies, with conditional navigations. So you see the context, it was very specific, but uh, we can learn from that. So we choose a few uh, uh, things. First, we decided to centralize the logic in a single place so we can handle it very easily. We, we didn't want it to spread it through different screens. One place to hold all the logic. And uh, we will use uh, uh, view models, all states uh, uh, located in the view models to uh, um, be used as an input or output, um, depending on the activities. And uh, um, only one um, controller in our uh, architecture was supposed to touch and to use the nav controller. So what we decided to create is called now, on our case, Flow Manager, but you can call it Navigator every, uh, the, the way you want, really. Uh, and a, a Flow Manager, his role is to convert the navigation events to um, navigation actions or destinations. Um, and then on the other uh, way around, uh, when the, 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 sorry, the um, destination will be changed, the view model will, be, uh, will receive um, the outputs and uh, the, the, the events that the screen changed. So we will update the view model, sorry, directly from the flow man manager, depending on the screen we are. Uh, just a simple schema here. We have an activity, and you see that uh, it's linked to the activity view model, the flow manager, and the nav control. And the flow, how it's happening. So uh, activity uh, view model will trigger events to the flow manager, then the flow manager will tell us, hey, nav control, we, we want to execute this action. We want to move from this screen to this one. And on the other, other end, the nav control will, will send a change event to the flow manager, the same uh, listener I showed you before, and it will update the uh, view model state. Very simple. Uh, now, uh, just one thing. When you want then, uh, having this paradigm, we have been able to simply test our whole flow uh, and our whole, whole, lo whole, sorry, whole logic of uh, uh, um, navigation. And this was really, really interesting for us because that was a complex flow. So that's something we really want to test with a lot of business logic, etc. So basically, testing the navigation here um, means that you are simply testing the flow manager. Um, just a very simple recipe to do that. I won't go into much detail. I have code, but if you are interested, I encourage you to go back on the slides, the link I showed you at the beginning. 
we will uh, simply fake the nav control, send navigation events, and verify that the flow manager uh, will throw a change on a good way, on the correct way, uh, the view model. Here is the code. We will dismiss it. We will see that if you want more details, I would be at the office hour too. Okay. So now let's focus on something that that was uh, uh, pretty interesting: the conditional navigation. Let's start with a simple thing: the li linear flow. So linear flow is when you have screens that are going from one to another. You very simple. Okay. So here is the nav graph for that. You have three fragments, and in each fragment, oh, I think yeah, you have three fragments, and in um, each action, you will have, uh, in, sorry, in the two first fragments, you have actions to go to the next one, here and here. And each action have a specific ID. Of course, first is action info to phone number, so info uh, screen to phone number screen. And phone number, uh, and the second one is phone number to verify SMS token, okay? So that's two actions. And the logic to, um, to navigate using that is that we call navigate on the nav control, and we check the current destination, and we execute the, the first action, info to phone number, if we are on the info screen. And on, uh, when we are on the phone number, we execute the other phone number to verify the SMS code token. OK, this is cool. It's OK, but it's hard to maintain. And remember, I told you that the actions can share IDs. And this will really simplify. So if we are using the same ID here, action next, on the both actions, the code uh, to navigate into our flow is really simplified. So from this, we just have navigate and call action next, because that's a generic action. And what we decided in our context is to have this rule. So when a destination uh, contains a single action, we use a generic ID. Okay, now we don't have a linear flow. Uh, actually, we need to handle this. You know, the choice when you are on the phone number fragment, you want to go to the next screen. Should it be uh, the verify app token fragment or the verify SMS token? So here is, oh, formatting, sorry. Uh, so here is the, uh, uh, the, the nav graph. We have these two actions inside, inside the phone number um, uh, tag. And this is the logic that we have. So uh, again, we are checking the current destination. When it's a phone number, we call a method just to check uh, with the logic we'll see just later um, what's the action to execute. And otherwise, for all the other screens, we decide that the action next must be done, must be uh, executed. And you see the get phone number action is very simple. Uh, we use the view model in this case to tell us uh, to tell well where we are supposed to go, and we return the good action depending on this logic, which is a very business logic that we don't really care in this talk. But when you have this kind of flow, or this one, which is a little bit more complicated, or this one, which is pretty big, and that's the register flow I was telling you about, the 66 screen that we had to handle. And uh, if you see here in the middle, there is a circular flow. So sometimes the user have to go through uh, um, a flow several times on the same graph. So when you, you want to handle this, uh, your logic is starting to be crazy. And uh, I want to show you just an example of how we try to make it simple uh, to maintain. So our idea is that we keep the flow manager, but inside the flow manager, we have something that is called a flow. And it will receive inputs, and it will give as a feedback an output, which is the action to execute. So the input is the current destination, of course, and also the current form state, because our user is filling a form, basically. And uh, yeah, and basically, this is the view model sometimes, or it can be uh, uh, the just a, a POCO, or, you know, the. Um, simple uh, uh, business uh, uh, object. Uh, so a flow will contain the navigation logic as a map. The key is the current destination. And the value of the map is the logic to execute to know where to go. And here is an example of implementation, but there are many ways to do it. Uh, we created an object, uh, register flow, which is the flow of the register uh, uh, flow. 
uh, we created an action, that we, a data class that is uh, an action. Um, yeah, the action is the value type of the map. And here is the, uh, the, the, um, the parameter is the register form, the form I told you about. You know, what's the, uh, sorry, basically what the user already filled into the form. And the result of this lambda, because actually this parameter of this action is a lambda, a coffin lambda, um, the result is the action to execute. So we have the, ma the map that we uh, uh, instantiate uh, just at the bottom. Uh, on this example, when you are on the phone number, you will execute this action. Yeah, the phone number is, of course, the current destination ID. And this is the logic that we will use to uh, simply tell when we are on the phone number, we have this logic. So uh, uh, when we arrive on the phone number, we check if we have invitations. If we have invitations, we send the user to the invitation selection screen. And also why we send, them, uh, send it uh, to the pricing because uh, basically it will create a new organization. And this way, uh, sorry, and this way you will have for each case, for each screen where you have business logic to implement and to maintain, to route uh, the user to a, the correct destination, you will be able to enrich this map and, uh, and maintain it on a single place. And the API of this object is uh, a method that is called uh, get action for, and you give the current destination with the formula, which is the input I told you about. Uh, when uh, we find the current destination in the map, we execute the action, uh, the action and give the, uh, the, the, the answer. And on any other case, again, we will return this generic action, because it means that there is only one action in the current destination. Yeah. This way, we have been really able to solve a lot of uh, uh, main, maintain, maintain, maintenance problem and, uh, and to grow a little bit more and to change also the flows very easily. Okay, now when you have different multi-start points. Basically, sometimes, uh, here is the uh, uh, login flow. You will want to have different first page in the application. So the f uh, on the left, you have the reconnect page. Oh, sorry, the login page. Sorry, the render is a little bit strange, but that's fine. So you have the login page with the email and the password that does not appear right now. I don't know why. Uh, and you have the reconnect page in the middle. Uh, the reconnect page is used when the user already uh, logged in once, okay? But you have to choose which uh, home you have to uh, use. You, what is the start destination of your nav graph? And sometimes you want to write direct directly from uh, the home destination to the, uh, uh, an, another screen, in our case, the reconnect page. And that's exactly you need to do, what you need to do. So in, if we look at our simplified graph, we have our own de uh, home destination, and we want to redirect and execute this action. So what we decided to do is, in our activity, we instantiate at the beginning, uh, the login activity in this case, uh, we instantiate the flow manager for the login. Uh, with all the parameters needed, and at the end of the young create, we call on the flow manager navigate to initial destination, and then it will simply call navigate using uh, the correct uh, um, action, just when we need to redirect the user. Okay, so we do that on, on in the young create directly. The problem with this, oh sorry, yeah, something I needed to tell you because of a few animations uh, that we had to implement and transitions between all the screens, uh, we had to use a, a, um, a first screen that we called splash. And what we wanted to do finally was to execute this action. But that's just a detail. Now, uh, let's see. Uh, on our fragment, what we have on the splash screen, uh, we will have two actions. One is direct into the reconnect page and the other one to the login page. And something that we did in, in the pop-up too, so the behavior that we define um, when the user press back, we said it, it, sh it should target splash, so the screen before, but it's inclusive. It means when the um, current uh, destination uh, login, for example, goes back, we also want to dismiss the screen before because that's inclusive. And this, uh, this is the splash screen. So when you press back, you leave the application simply. 
uh, yeah, and the content of the, uh, yeah, again, we come back to our implementation on the navigate to in, uh, initial destination. Just tell you this is wrong, actually. Uh, we noticed that it was not working the way we implemented it. And to understand a little bit why, uh, let's try to understand what's happening under the hood on Nav Component. So when you create your activity, uh, the Navos fragment will be instantiated when uh, the view is instantiated. Then uh, the Navos fragment will instantiate the Nav controller. And then the Nav controller will maintain a destination backstack. There are not fragments, there are destinations, uh, specific objects. And then we will call navigate to the login. And we will have on our backstack the splash and the login screen. Uh, at this moment, we are uh, the, the end of our backstack is the login, right? Uh, but if the user rotates the phone or change the language, what's happening? The activity, the nav host, and the nav control will be dismissed, of course, and they will call. Um, they will all call the methods to save the state, and that's the case also for the nav control. And what the nav control will do? It will copy the current backstack, it will uh, store uh, the current uh, uh, backstack, destination backstack, and then it will be stored. And when the activity goes back, the nav host fragment, etc., the nav control will restore this backstack. And at this moment, the current destination is login. But if we want to execute an action when we are already on the login, the nav control will uh, uh, raise an exception and it will uh, crash the application. So what we did simply is uh, to check the current destination when we are uh, on the navigate to uh, uh, initial destination method, checking that we are at the start destination of the flow. Uh, we could check that on the activity level, you know, with the uh, bundles, uh, the, uh, the um, sorry, the, yeah, with the bundle that we receive, uh, uh, but we really wanted to make our uh, flow manager robust and testable, and that's something that we wanted to test. So basically, that's the reason why we put it there. Yes. Okay. Um, something that could be interesting for a few people if you are not using Fragment. I will be very short on that one. Uh, Basically, just to show you how you can use something else than fragment using nav component. So you have all this architecture that we know, the activity, owning the nav host fragment, owning the nav controller. And in the nav controller, you will have a navigator provider. And this provider is a simple map linking a tag, a fragment, or an activity that you can use on your XML uh, nav graph uh, to what is called a navigator. Fragment navigator, activity navigator. But actually, you can create your own. Uh, and basically, the navigator, when you are on the navigation.xml, uh, the nav graph, uh, when you are using fragment or activity, it will choose the navigator correct corresponding to uh, uh, the, 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 the item that you, uh, uh, that you wrote. Um, basically, when you are using fragment, it will use uh, the fragment manager to transition between a, a screen and change the screen uh, on the display. Uh, a navigator, you can uh, implement it uh, from scratch. Uh, you, it, it will define a mechanism um, for navi navigating within the app. And it will also have to maintain the back stack. And something that you have to do is to annotate uh, your class, because that will be sim a simple class, uh, with the, the uh, navigator.name annotation to provide, in this case, I, I shown you the code that you have on the fragment navigator. You see that you have the fragment um, uh, label defined on top of this class. Oh. Okay, uh, let's talk about the navi bottom navigation. I told you before um, that there is a problem. So here is an example of an application where you have here yeah, I will rewind, rewind quickly. Uh, so that's a simple application with the bottom uh, view, uh, navigation view uh, at the middle with three items. You see that in the middle, we have a list that we are scrolling to another, uh, to that we are scrolling. And we, we go back to home and go back to the dashboard, you see that we are losing the state. So we are going back to the top of the list. And on many, many, many applications, that's uh, something we don't want, really. 
Uh, I know that the guidelines tell that uh, you should lose the state when you have a bottom navigation, but on many cases, it's not really something you want. Uh, for many good reasons, and bad reasons too, but they are good too. Uh, so we will have to handle it. And uh, basically what's happening, why it's, uh, there is this problem, um, when you are linking your UI, the navigation, uh, bottom navigation view with uh, nav controller, you will use a method called setup with nav controller, giving your uh, bottom navigation view. And it will call, oh, sorry, here is the code. It, it will uh, 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 link the um, navigation view events to uh, a method that is on nav destination selected. And inside this, um, um, uh, inside this method, sorry, uh, you will define, the code is defining the set pop-up to to the start destination. So now let's try to see, and of course it's non-inclusive because we don't want to dismiss the start destination in this case. So let's try to understand a little bit what we want to do now. We have an example with uh, three tabs, a home tab two and uh, tab three. And basically, if we want to uh, do a schema of the dependency, we have the home tab fragment and, uh, and the two other fragments. And the, the two other fragments on the right are linking as a pop-up to, to the home tab. That's exactly what they do uh, in the code. So when the user opens the app, uh, we will add the home tab fragment to the stack. When the user taps on tab uh, two, then a new candidate is created, tab two, and his pop-up two is the home tab fragment. Uh, there is nothing to do, so in this case, we will add simply the tab two fragment to the stack. Now, if we click on tab three, then uh, again, we will want to add the tab th uh, three uh, to the back stack, and we check that there is a pop-up two to the home tab fragment. So basically, what will happen now, the tab two fragment will be dismissed and destroyed. And then we leak the tab two fra uh, fragment to the back stack of the, um, uh, of the current uh, nav controller. Uh, again, when we click back on the tab two, uh, we were insta the, sorry, the library will instantiate again the tab two fragment and dismiss the tab three. But the problem here is that the tab two fragment that you see here is not the same instance that we had uh, uh, before on the stack. So basically, it has not been detached and attached uh, again. It has been destroyed into that. So that's the reason why we lose the state and we have no control to keep the, 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 the state of this fragment. And that's a big problem. So uh, there is a, a bug has been uh, created on that. And uh, there are a lot of discussion. I will make it short. Basically, the promise uh, hack to get around this problem and to handle this problem. And there is a sample that have been created. And basically, uh, what they did is really uh, uh, interesting. Uh, oh yeah, again, this is a simple case. So you will, uh, when you have your activity, you have your nav control with the different tab. And, uh, um, and here on the tab three, I added a detail just for you to, to see something clearly. Uh, so on the common case, we have this nav uh, host fragment that is linked to uh, the activity, and it will be linked again to the nav graph, okay, to create the stack. Uh, basically, that's the example I showed you before. And then you will have the tab one fragment that will be created, tab three on the stack, the detail fragment, and if you add the tab two, you will see the tab three and detail will be dismissed, okay? So that's the common, that's the case right now. Uh, and the hack that they did is that, okay, the nav host is actually holding a backstack. And what we want here is to have several backstack maintained. Um, and that's exactly what they do in this uh, hack. So basically, you will have your activity. You create a frame layout. You will uh, spread your different tab in uh, a nav graph, uh, an independent nav graph. And for each nav graph, uh, the, 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 this piece of code will create a nav host fragment dedicated to, to each tab. And the frame layout will simply link and replace the nav host fragment into the frame layout. So this is a hack, but it's working uh, uh, pretty well. And uh, just to show you very simply, the API looks like that. There is a Kotlin extension you call setup with nav control, and you have all the code there. 
Um, there is a, a link on the slides about uh, this uh, um, piece of code that are on the s Google samples of the NAC component. If you want to again, dig in, it's uh, pretty interesting to, to, to watch. Uh, there is a last thing I wanted to tell you. Uh, it's how to handle multi-module navigation. So that's not the problem I had with Control, but that's something I ha we had recently at Tiger Year. So what I'm telling you about is pretty new and not really clear for me for now, but you will see. Um, so most of the time on your application, you will have a module, main module that is called app or anything. And you have different um, modules and app depend on these models, and there are features, for example. And these features are sharing content, sharing logic on the base uh, model. On each feature, you will have different fragments, because of course, you will have your user uh, uh, UI in the features. And most of the time, again, um, you'll put, uh, you will end up uh, putting the nav graph into the base uh, uh, module. Um, I won't go again into too much detail because I don't have a lot of time, but there is a nice article uh, by David Vavra. Uh, there are, it's also linked in the um, speaker notes on the, on the slides. Uh, yeah, but when you are doing that, you have a problem. Is that when you are, want to edit your nav graph, you will see that you won't be able to um, have auto completion and fancy uh, features that you can have when you are in the single module. Because basically, on the base module, um, sorry, the base module doesn't know the different fragments that you have on your different features. So the solution will be to have the nav graph into the app, right? And at this moment, everything is working fine. You have your preview uh, uh, on your, you know, your UI preview, uh, um, and you have your auto completion, everything you need. But the problem when you do that is that you will break safe args, the feature I told you that is pretty interesting. Um, and if you want to navigate, uh, to create the navigation inside your features, you won't be able to do that because you would, won't have the ID that are on the app. So the features doesn't know the ID that are uh, on the app module. So we ended up, we ended up uh, doing something. Uh, it's actually to have the nav graph on the both models, base and app, because then everything should work. Everything should work. Uh, yeah. And, and actually, that was the goal, but we didn't really know how to do that. So we looked at, at the Save Arc uh, Gradle plugin, and we found something interesting, is that actually, when they are generating the classes of Save Arcs, uh, they are looking at the um, source sets, looking for the REST uh, directories, and on the navigation folder. And this uh, gave us an idea, very simple, is that to create uh, to share actually one single file using the source set between these different models. So we created a specific folder here, shared rest, that we added to the source set of the two uh, modules, app and base. Uh, so basically, on our app, we will add the source set on debug, only, just debug, uh, and uh, on the base module, we'll add it on main. Why we do that on debug only is that when you are doing this, so when you are sharing a navigation um, graph file between different models, it will break progress because it will generate several times the same uh, classes. And that's something that's the only way we, uh, we achieved to have a good developer experience with something that was working and that was still clean in terms of uh, uh, architecture. And the good thing with that is that it's a two-line fix using an official API. But that's still a hack. There is no real feature to handle multi, uh, model development using enough uh, uh, component right now. Uh, and that's a problem. And uh, yeah, you have this hack. <laughs> I don't know what you can do with that. We will keep it, uh, but we are really, uh, uh, we will be very thrilled to have something uh, officially supported in Android Studio for this kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, last topic, uh, single activity. Should you do single activity? Here is my point of view. Do whatever you want. Actually, we are on a nav component talk um, that's really, really 
your problem. And actually, it's not the navigation component problem. This, for me, this library is ready. Uh, it will help you to, ach to achieve the single activity pattern, really, it will help you. But if you want to do multi-activity, it will handle all the things too. I tried the both. Uh, we are on single activity at Tagger, and we used to be on a multi-activity uh, at Kanto, and it works great on both ways. So for me, no question. On during this talk, you won't have any solution. Just do your uh, nav component won't be a constraint for you. Uh, now, let's conclude. Uh, OK. Should you use, in my opinion, nav component? Yes, that's a short answer. And why? Because it's clean and future proof. Because, you know, Google pushed a lot of effort on uh, building the, the Android ecosystem on the very good way uh, um, the few last few years. Uh, and the good thing is that they are creating standards. And this is really interesting when we have an industry, because if we have standards, we have same ways to think about things and to design things and sometimes to use, because if we all use nav component, it's a good thing. And uh, so it should be your default tool if you want to handle navigation. Uh, also, it's really easy to add it into a current project. So we started the counter application without having nav component, and we added it to different features, and it was working really well. Also, something that is extremely important, the tooling is crazy. I mean, it's really, really, really interesting. It really changed the way uh, we, as developers, used to work with a, a product team. Um, because we were able to show them how complex the thing they wanted us to develop was, really. Because they had this big graph of the registers. Or, wow, do you? Uh, now you know. Now you see that. And you can just even manipulate it. So the tooling is the key in this tool. Uh, the API is nice, but the tooling is a key because that's a way to share information in your team. Uh, and that's really good when you have a newcomer and it just opens the nav graphs and it sees with the preview and everything how the app uh, and uh, what the user uh, can do uh, and how, what the user flow basically. Uh, and again, it's not perfect. I've shown you that there are a few limitations right now. Uh, I don't know when it will be solved. Uh, but I really encourage you to test you if you can. Thank you. <coughs> yes, if you have questions, uh, there I have an office hour uh, soon. <laughs> I don't know. At four? Yeah, at four in the office hour uh, corner. Thanks a lot. <laughs>